Well, welcome to the South in Review. And of course, this week, our main game this week comes from the South Division, where it is leaders Scholing taking on third place Hamworthy United. Later in the show, you'll see Chairman uh, Steve from Hamworthy will join us. And of course, also Phil and Dave uh, from Scholing as well in what is going to be a fantastic uh, game in the Southern League this week. But it's also some massive games as well this week in all of the leagues. So let's then start off then with, first of all, of course, uh, we'll start off as we always do with the uh, Central League. And of course, we'll pull it up for you. And um, the Central League then, here we go then. So starting off at the top then, it's AFC Rushton and Diamonds. They're in 22nd. And of course, they're going to take on 21st place, Hensford Town. Alba Church, they're in 17th. They're going to take on 11th place, uh, St. Ives Town. Barwell, they're in 14th. They're going to take on first place, Tamworth. Tamworth. And in of course, then it's Bashford. So Baseford United in 13th. They're going to take on sixth place, Mickelover. Bromsgrove Sporting, of course, they're in 15th. They're going to take on 18th place, Kings Langley. Uh, Colville in another massive game, of course, this week in the Central League. Colville in fourth. They're going to take on second place, Leaston. Uh, Hitchintown in 10th. They're going to take on Nuneaton Borough in third. Needham Market in 16th. Well, they're going to take on 18th place, Ilkinston Town. Royston Town in seventh. They're going to take on Stratford Town in 20th. And Starbridge in 12th. They're going to take on Bedford Town, who are in 19th. And of course, in the South Division this week, we have got Dorchester Town, they're in 8th. They're going to take on Bracknell Town, who are in 4th. Hamill Town, they're in 12th. They're going to take on 14th place, Salisbury. The Harrow Borough in 18th place. They're going to take on 7th place, Swindon Supermarine. In another massive game this week, of course, for both sides, Hendon in 20th take on 2nd place, Western Supermare. Met Police, they're in 6th. They take on Murpha, they're in 10th. Northley, who are an impressive runner form lately, they're in 22nd still, but closing that gap. They're taking on 16th place, Gospel Borough. Paul Town, they're in 5th. They're going to take on 11th place, Beaconsfield Town. 13th place, Tiverton Town. They're going to take on 3rd place, Chesham United. Truro City, the new leaders of the Southern League Premier South. They're going to take on 21st place, Hartley Whitney. 17th place, Winchester City. They're going to take on 15th place, Plymouth Parkway. And of course, in 19th place, Yate Town. They're going to take on 9th place, Hayes and Yedding. Well, let's move over then to the Central Division. And in the Central Division this week, in uh, 16th place is Owlsbury. They're going to take on 13th place, Hadley. Burke Hampstead, the runaway leaders of the Central Division, of course, in first, as we just said. They're going to take on 10th place, Biggleswade Town. In a massive game, it's turned out now, of course, to be a huge game. Biggleswade in second, take on a really in a bad form at the moment. Fourth place, where looking to get back in the winning runs. Siren Sester, well, of course, they're sitting in sixth. They're going to take on AFC Dunstable in eighth. Of course, they're looking for a slip up from where to get themselves in to those playoff places. Third place, Didcot Town. They're in playing seventh place, Welling Garden City. 18th place, FC Romania. They're going to take on 14th place, Tame United. And then we've got Kidlington. They're in fifth. They're going to take on 19th place, Barton Rovers. Waltham Abbey. They're in 11th. They're going to take on Highworth Town in 17th. And Walthamstow in ninth. Well, they're going to take on Kempston Rovers, who are in 12th. And then, of course, moving along then to the South Division. And in the South Division, second place, AFC Totten. They are going to take on 11th place, Melscombe Town. Fifth place, Bashley. They're going to take on 18th place, Bidford. 12th place, Bishops Cleave. They're going to take on 19th place, Limington Town. Eastern Town, Eastern, Eastern United, of course, who are in 10th. They're going to take on 14th place, Willan Rovers. Exmouth Town, they're in 7th. They're going to take on 16th place, Bristol Manor Farm, who are starting to find a little bit of form. Froome Town in 13th. They're going to take on 4th place, Wimborne Town. Then our game of the day, of course. 1st place, Sholing. They're going to take on Hamworthy United, who are in 3rd. Slimbridge, they're in 20th. They're going to take on Larko Athletic, who are in 15th. 
Tavistock are in six. They're going to take on 17th place, Cinderford Town. And Westbury United in eighth are going to take on ninth place, Porton Rovers. So as you can see, there's some massive games going to be taking place this week in the Southern League. So make sure you get yourself out to some of these games because there are some crackers in all four divisions. Of course, as we said, our special guests this week are Sholing, Dave and Phil. And of course, also Steve, the chairman of Hamworthy United. I had the pleasure of speaking to all three of them earlier on in the week. And uh, it was a fantastic little chat. And uh, to get a little bit more about Sholing, a little bit more about of course, Hamworthy United, and find out about how their clubs tick, what they're looking forward to at the weekend, their form going into these games, maybe if they manage to get to playoffs or automatic promotion, holidays. We spoke about everything that's going to interfere maybe with the running for both Sholin and, of course, to Hamworthy United. So let's get over to those interviews then, and we'll bring you that right now. Well, welcome to a South uh, in preview, and, of course, uh, joining us uh, Today, of course, for our game of the weekend, of course, it's going to be, of course, uh, Sholin against Hamworth United. And we're really lucky to say uh, that join us today from Sholin first is he's, he's, he's Dave and Phil. And, of course, joining us as well from uh, Hamworthy, of course, he's the chairman uh, in Steve. And uh, so it's great to have you on, Steve, as well, and making you a sort of, or both of you guys making sort of a, a second visit to the show. But... The, the weekend, I mean, it's going to be a fantastic game. And, uh, you know, two teams that are, you know, that, that are in great form at the moment. You know, the tables, you know, first and, you know, first and third. All right, OK, there's, there may be a few points in it, shall we say, between the two of you. But it's still going to be a really tough game uh, for you, Dave, to start with. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the first game we had against Hamworthy away was a tough one. You know, we drew one all. Um, I think they've done really, really well to to be where they are, third place in their first season back. You know, so it's, it's it's one of these things where every game's difficult. Um, this one's probably right up there with the Tottenham game, really, which we had last week. And uh, you know, you're in the right, don't you? To be third place, you've got to be a good team. And, and certainly, they've pulled out results really, which have surprised me as well, to be honest with you. But uh, you know, they've settled into uh, to this league really well, and um, we're looking forward to it on Saturday. Yeah. Mm. I mean, yourself, Steve? Yeah, I mean, going back to the uh, the home game with Sholing, I, I, you know, I'm sure Dave will agree. I, I, we felt a little bit agreed that we didn't actually take all three points on the day. I mean, it, it was a very good game, to be honest. But, you know, I haven't been to Sholing now for a, a year or two, but, um, you know, Sholing at home is a completely different entity, isn't it? So, uh, you know, it will be a very, very tough game. But, yeah, we're looking forward to it. I mean, with, with, the, with, with these sort of games, I mean, what what is the distance between you two guys and is it something that you can send sort of you know maybe I don't know on a Tuesday night send Phil down to Tuesday night say do us a favour go down and have a look at, at Hamworthy or does or do you or do you take go yourself I mean I mean what what is this sort of you know way of doing things for you down at Sholin? Yeah I mean you know we will do that we will go and um you know seems see teams play obviously obviously we played Hamworthy before we you know we know that the players down there I know they've added to it recently as well. Um but yeah I mean it's about respecting every team you play against. And uh, obviously sometimes you could go down, that's the trouble, and you could you could see a, gap, a game where like there's three or four changes or three people being, you know, rested, for instance. You know, we've done that many a time. Um, in the in the FA Vars run, which did when we won it in 2014, you know, I, I made the mistake of going and see two two teams and uh, we played them further on and they had like completely different lineup formation and rest of it so yeah you, you got to take every game as it comes along really and um we know what their strengths are and uh yeah it's just making sure that we do the job our end really it's like you just execute the basics and you're going to win most matches but you've got to execute the basics which isn't easy i mean with yourself Stephen, is it the same sort of thing for you or or, or you know does the manager sort of you know, have a visit and 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 do do when you go to these grounds to go and scout the the the, the games and the, the team. Do you actually let the other team know? Say, look, can you let us in for nothing, or, or you know, or you know, graces, or do you do you not let them know that you're actually coming down and you get spotted yeah. in the crowd underneath the sort of like the gut, you know, under the big woolly hat and the on the high collar <laughs> of the coat. Uh, well, do you know what? I'm not really sure. I, you know, since Dan and Steve have been at the helm, um, you know, I'm just absolutely amazed as to uh, what sort of network they're involved in. And, um, you know, clearly the guys have played at this level and higher. So, you know, they're very well connected. And, um, you know, I think generally um, they know people in certain parts of the country. So, 
you know, we, if we don't need to send anybody from Hamworthy, then we'll we'll get somebody local. But but yes, of course. I mean, as they alluded to, the fact that um, you know, if we have an opportunity to watch the opponents, then of course that's what we'll do. But um, you know, Dave touched on you know the, the history of Showling, didn't he? You know, the the Vars winners. You know, the, the years that we were in Wessex together and what they were winning, what they were achieving, and how difficult a side they were at any level to to play against. And um, and I think that's um, you know when we played them recently. Uh, uh, you know, I thought to myself, well, this will be a, you know, potentially a home loss. But, you know, it just surprised me as to how competitive we were on the day. And, um, you know, Dan and Steve would just lay out their um, their side to, you know, to try and, I'm sure, win the game. I mean, I'd take a point now and I'd be quite happy with that. But, um, you know, they're not built like that. No, I'm sure they'll be putting together a plan to obviously try and come away with, um, you know, whatever they can. So, uh, yeah, difficult for me. Just sit there and just get very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel, and, and Dave, I mean, uh, you know, yourself, do you go down there with a the big woolly hat on and the, and, the, and, the, and the heavy coat, or is it just a case of you just go down and have a look or send somebody else? I mean, to be honest with you, I've, I, you know, it's, Phil's been to a couple of games, yeah. haven't you? Um, most people know me, that's the problem, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's very difficult to hide, you know. It's, it's But, you know, I must admit, I always pay my way. I don't go in for free or anything like that because it's just something, just one of my things really I prefer to do. And um, so yeah, I just I just go in and, and I, I don't make a like a, a sort of like make people aware of me so to speak. But um, I go into sort of like into the darker parts of the ground so to speak, and uh, yeah, go from there. But what's your what's your way through it, Phil? For me, like, similar to Dave, I just I, I, if I'm going to watch the game, I just turn up, get a ticket at the gate, and just sit there and watch the game. I think if if someone knows me and they come and say hello, I'm not going to sort of ignore them, but I'm not going to make it really known that I'm there. It's just Sometimes I just go and watch the game of football. I don't really make notes on the other team. It's just because Saturday afternoon is my football afternoon. I need to get out and watch something, especially if we haven't got a game on ourselves. Um, so it's just a, it's just a chance to get out there and see teams that play in our league and see what they're about. But like Dave said, it's team could be week one playing a certain team and then you play them six weeks later and they've got three players injured, two new signings and playing a completely different formation. And that's actually because I'm a little bit of phone news. So it's actually made it worse by watching them than it did make it easier. Mm. And, and, and that... Yeah, so that is a non-league football thing, isn't it? I suppose is that you just never know. You know, I mean, I know some seasons games with teams that I've been part, you know, part of or part of the, you know, the backroom sort of side of it. And you, you, you're there one year. You might have, if you're lucky, thirty players through the whole season or whatever else. You know, you know, and in another season, you might be struggling a little bit, and that thirty might have a zero on the end of it. Do you know what I mean? Because it seems to be a different eleven every single week with different names that you, people you've never heard of. So. Does I mean scouting wise? I mean, when you see that sort of thing, is, does that sort of make you think? Does it really worth me going to see it? I think it's um I I go and visit games for mainly for recruitment really because <clears throat> the recruitment is is the crucial bit of anything to do with any club, and I think that's again even more um you know preference now. I mean it's, it's one of those things where you get a player recommended, but until you go and see him yourself. Mm. Actually, you know that makes a decision whether to you know make an approach in or not. You know, um, but yeah, I mean, there's you know visiting football grassroots is is fun, isn't it? I think it's brilliant when you go visit all these grounds. You know, we all get welcomed. Um, we enjoy it. We enjoy a bit of banter with the places we go to as well. Um, we're you know, Shannon Football Club is like a family club. Um, as I've said before, um, and all my players are sort of like you know know that every game is going to be tough because as soon as you mentioned showing into any conversation obviously teams tend to sort of like double their efforts against us but that's that's what we've got to live with as well so i mean form guide i mean i've just I've just pulled the form guide up in the last um sort of six games and it sort of rolls reverse for you two guys because of course showing first hamworthy third but in the form guide in the last six games hamworthy sitting top and, and showing finishing third you know a third at the minute in it and of course totten in between the two of you so Good run of form at the minute, then, Steve? Yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, we were very fortunate with all the bad weather we had in January. Um, obviously, with the 3G pitch, you know, we could we were able to play and obviously uh, managed to maintain, uh, you know, some good momentum. Um, we've had a couple of um, toughies. I mean, we were, um, you know, we managed to score very late at home um, on Saturday against Froome. We managed to, to steal all three points. And again, a very tough game. Uh, and the week before, you know, we were three one down with two minutes to go at Willand, and um, we, we managed to score before the ninety, and then in stoppage time to grab a point. So, you know, it's. Um, I, I think um, I've said to you in, in the past that um, you know on the, the success we had last year, 
um, basically maintained a winning mentality. And one of the things that um, Dan and Steve have worked on particularly is fitness. I always thought we were quite a fit side last year, but, you know, um, they've worked on that. They clearly weren't happy with the situation uh, when they took over and um, they've got them fitter. And, um, and I think that probably, you know, is, um, is making um, great strides into our ability to score late goals. But, but yeah, I mean, um, they all work very hard for each other. Um, I think um, they have the mentality they, they're capable and they're beating anybody. Um, and I'm sure they'll take that sort of attitude into Saturday's game. But, um, but yeah, I mean, very pleasing. What, what can I say? Just sit there and enjoy the ride, really. I'm just looking at some of the, you know, some of the, the scores, of course, in the last sort of like few weeks or whatever else. And there's a few fives in there. There's some sixes in there. There's a four in there. Quite a few threes in there. So, you know, quite a free scoring team. Um, yeah, I mean, that wasn't quite the case a little bit earlier in the season. We went through a little spell where, you know, we were struggling to get to get the goals. We were still, you know, getting results, but, you know, um, uh, with the odd goal or so. But, um, yeah, I mean, we had a couple of additions come into the side and, uh, you know, the lads wanted to play. And, you know, they, they set their stall out depending on who the opposition is. And, um, you know, the goals have, um, have been quite free-flowing. And I think we're probably, what is it, third highest scores in the league, something like that, which is quite surprising, really. Yeah, you're second to us. Second, yeah. Well, we're the top of the second, yeah. <laughs> 50, you got, 50 you got, yeah. I mean, I'm looking, I'm looking at this, and you know, when you look at the showing side of it. You know, you say free scoring teams and stuff, but you look at you look at the amount of goals that both you sides have conceded as well. You, you've got, you know, both sides are don't concede too many, or very rarely do you concede uh, that many. I mean, I know that uh, you know there's been a, a few sort of. How can we put it, a couple of frees have gone in the net for both sides, both sides. But I mean, normally it's going to be so. What we're looking at then at the weekend, we say we're both free scoring sides, top two's goal score, uh, <laughs> goal scoring teams in in there. Is it nil nil? Yeah, well, I say yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I take that now. <laughs> I think well, we've drawn five, I think, and uh, Hammer have drawn eight. So I think it's a low scoring game. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's on the day, isn't it? I mean, you know, it's uh, it, I must say it does come back to the three G's as well, though three G three G pitches against the grass pitches as well. Now I, I think obviously you know three G pitches uh, if you play on them regular, I think obviously there is a slight advantage, but also it's a disadvantage when you go away sometimes when you're used to three G mm. when you're playing on grass, you know. Mm. Um, but uh, I just did some stats because I'm a stat person as well and. It's quite, quite really fun. Well, not funny, but it's, it's quite sort of like, not alarming, but it's quite interesting, put it that way, that, you know, 50 of those goals, 40 of those goals have been scored on 3G services and uh, only 10 on uh, grass pitches because you beat Bishop's Cleave away 5-1, I think it was. But, That's right, um, we did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there is a little bit of indicator there as well, but um, we're going to make our pitch as bad as we can for Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think it might be a pleasure actually to to play on your surface, having seen sort of pictures of it. But I mean, uh, yeah. yeah, some of the some of the away pitches we've played on have been very, how can I put it, uneven. Or I, you know, I, 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 without degrading them as played fields, that's how I sort of sometimes express it. But it has been difficult to, you know, the ball sort of stays up in the air, doesn't it? Because it doesn't roll very well. But I'm sure with the surface that you're probably used to playing on, um, you know, providing the weather's not going to upset the balance of the game, I'm sure it'll be a very exciting and a very close game. I hope so, for the benefit of the crowd. I mean, you say you say that about pitches, you know, doing the goal show and you see some of the pitches that you see on it. And you look at some, wow. Do you know what I mean? You know, there is some pitches on there that look amazing. You know, there's some pitches on there that maybe less amazing, shall we say, when you, when you actually get to them. But, you know, both of you guys are unbeaten at home. So does that put you under a little bit of pressure to, you know, how can we put it at the weekend, Dave? Do you, you know, with, with that sort of unbeaten at home, or you, do you feel that you can carry that on? I mean, or, or are they going to do a Manchester City to to you like Man City did to Arsenal uh, last night and take that first? Uh, yeah, yeah on your record. I mean, we've been, you know, we've been like twelve points in front. You know, we've been top of the league since the second week of the season, and our lads have done really well. You know, to put up like because don't care what you say, there is that little bit of pressure involved when you're top of the league. It's obviously everybody wants to beat you, and there's runs which you go on as well. I mean, you know, Wimborne had a run uh, recently halted, and you know we're in a, on in the middle of a, a decent run ourselves. I'm beating in sixteen, I think what it is, you know, but it's on the day. You just got to tick these games off one at a time. You know that's all you can do. You know, uh, concentrate on the next match, 
because, mm. like I say, every game's difficult in this Southern League. You know, it's not it's not one easy game. Every, everywhere you go, it's a tough, tough game. And I mean, for, for yourselves, though, I mean, you know, midweek last week, I think I think it was when you took on Tottenham, getting that victory against them puts you in, you know, in, in sort of pole position now, doesn't it? Because where before maybe they they might have had sort of, if they'd have got anything off you on the day, they could have been the, the team that it was in their hands. But, you know, they're on 52, two games in hand, 58 to your 59. So, you know, it's in your hands now. Yeah, I mean, I think we're one point in front of them if they win their two games in hand. But I say it's it's a long, there's lots of matches in between, you know, between now and then. And uh, there's obviously, you know, one thing I would say is good for the area because obviously, you know, all the teams, I think in the top five, I might be wrong, um, have been sort of like in the Wessex League. So, um, which is a great, you know, position to be in, you know, for these clubs. You know, I'd like to say, I mentioned Hamworthy on purpose because they've done extremely well to settle into the Southern League as quick as they can. Bashley as well, you know, all good teams, you know. Um, so Tottenham, obviously, the team to chase, to be honest with you, they were pre-season favourites. Um, I'm not going to lie, you know, with their resources and the rest of it and, you know, our bench and their bench, you can't compare it really because, you know, I'm a, I'm a great believer in actually um, providing a, a platform for younger players. So I'll probably have probably a couple of players who are 17, 18 on the bench. Different philosophies, you know, they want to get out of this league. We want to get out of the league, but... You know, at the end of the day, it will come down to resources because if you can travel with the bench, which they've got, um, they had a tremendous result last night against Exmouth, I think, winning 3-1. So if you can go to those areas, um, you know, it's a lot of travelling um, and, and carry on the way they're doing it, they're going to be right up there, you know, pushing was, up the title. <laughs> and, that's, and that's where you go last game of the season. Well, that's it. Yeah, last game of the season, and I'll, I'll top, I'm on the cruise ship somewhere. To be honest with you, that's how that's how confident I was of making the playoffs this year. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it, there's only one thing more important in football, and that's family. And I've got uh, something which I can't get out of, unfortunately, but hopefully it'll be sorted by them. And of course, you know, you've got the other one as well for yourself, though, because you haven't played Tavistock yet either. And of course, they're sort of hanging around with Bashley in that sort of last position as well. So. That's going to be quite tough for you as well. Yeah, like I say, they're all tough. Um, you know, it's just there's just no easy games. You know, um, so I mean, what manager you talk to? You could talk to Dan. You could talk to Jimmy Ball. Any any manager, they tell you the same thing. It's you know, I mean, we we got beaten by Biddeford this year, um, and we got beaten by Westbury. That's no disrespect to those two teams because they're extremely good and it's a tough place to go. You know, but um, you know, we've done well against the team in and around us. Um, obviously, we've taken points off. I think it's actually only us and Hamworthy who have actually beaten Tottenham. We've beaten them twice and Hamworthy have worthy of um, beating them and also drawn away to Tottenham. So, you know, between the two of us, we've we've caused quite a bit of damage to Tottenham this year, really, from a points point of view, you know. But um, like I say, there's there's some really good teams in this league, you know, uh, below below halfway, which are really difficult places to go to. You know, and even playing them at home because you know every, every side is capable of beating each other in this league. You know, us included. But going back to what you just said there about the last game of the season, I mean, are you away on on a holiday? Yeah, um, basically, COVID came around, and um, there was a, a couple of trips which we had planned. Um, we've, you know, three or four months ago, we had a situation where actually it was pre-season when we had the opportunity to sort of revisit those trips and um, there's a special deal going. And uh, I said yes to it. I, I, a moment of weakness, you know, I never do. I never miss football matches at all. But you know what it is? It's like, you know, go back five months and thinking about April, sort of like, well, April, May 2023 seemed a long way off. And um I did, just said yes. <laughs> I probably won't even listen to the question, to be honest so, with you. So, so does that does that uh, does that decision change? Worst case scenario, we'll go with worst case scenario, okay? And you're in, and all of a sudden you you, you finish in number two, and you, you've got to play playoffs. I mean, does that does it does the decision then change, or just feel take over? Family, family's more important, unfortunately. <laughs> and I've, got, I've got a capable guy here. I've got, I've got my guy and my son, who's a capable manager, and I borrow on Mason as well. So I've got a support team there, and you know they're more than capable of taking over. He yeah. said that for a gritted teeth, Phil. Did you say that? <laughs> he said that. Way. I'm, I'm watching my hair that day, so I think I'm busy. <laughs> 
Yeah. I'll tell you what, I don't, you know, and I hope it doesn't happen for you, but I can't oh, dear me. I wouldn't want to be you. I wouldn't want to be I wouldn't want that to, wouldn't want to be you on that to a couple of days, <laughs> I'll tell you. Dear me. Especially when I'm saying well, especially what I'm saying to players about how much commitment I'm I'm expecting for them, you know, that's the thing. <laughs> but I can go back twenty years and it's the first time I've ever done it. <laughs> so you know, there you go. <laughs> Steve is the chairman, what would you say? Would you be calling him up and saying, no, I need you, I need you? <laughs> um, well, it depends after this uh, result on Saturday, doesn't it? Really? <laughs> I mean, if, if, we, if we go there and, uh, well, like I say, disrupt, uh, you know, Sholin's push for promotion, um, then I don't know, really. But, I, I, you know, Dave's absolutely right. Family is important. You know, I've been doing this connected with the club for such a long time. Uh, I don't know why it's not that really keen on football, but she's never, ever stopped me from doing what I want to, what to do, how what I love best. So uh, that's a difficult one, really, isn't it? But, um, yeah, it's interesting. Um, I, you know, I, I, I'm just, like I said to you before, you know, my, my goal for the start of the season was just to stay at this level. And, uh, you know, we far exceeded that. I think, you know, clearly now I've stopped saying we're punching above our weight because I think we are where we deserve to be. And um, and I think realistically, we're looking forward to, you know, at least trying to stay in those playoff places and, and just make more history for Hamworthy, really. So I was going to ask you that, does, does, does the uh, sort of goal change now? Because, you know, even since the last time we spoke, I think the last time we spoke, we were sort of hobbing around that sort of fourth, fifth, sixth position, that, those areas. And now we're somewhere third. We're nine points clear of the, of, you know, of the of the chasing pack. And one of those teams has got, what has played one more than you and one of them has played two more than you. So, you know, all of a sudden, as, as chairman, does goals change now? Does it is it like you're looking forward to maybe a, you know, I don't know, repeat of this game at the weekend in in, in a playoff final or Tottenham in the final or, 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 or you know, what, where are we looking at? Well, I think you've got to be realistic. I mean, we've still got to go, uh, we've still got to play Exmouth twice. We've got to play Tavistock. We've still got Wimborne, obviously, showing in Saturday. But, you know, I'm on the lookout for a Hollywood actor who's living somewhere in the Hamworthy area, really. <laughs> um, you know, I think, I think again, yeah, yeah, you know, from a, a financial perspective, um, yeah, we all know it's very difficult to keep this, um, this sort of uh, momentum going. Um, as to what happens at the end of the season if we're in that position, well, heaven only knows. But um, you know, I, I'm just so um, pleased for the for the club, for the managing team, for the players, um, for, for them to have got themselves where they are. And um, you know, who am I to sort of peg that back? Let's just see where it goes. It's um, fantastic. I mean, one question I'd ask you playoff wise, and you know, hopefully one of you is in the playoffs and the other one isn't in the playoffs as such, but. Is it a situation for you that second place is probably the worst place to finish? Not because you haven't been promoted, but because you've then got to play the fifth place team that nine times out of 10, they're the team that are informed to get to fifth place. You always find that it's somebody that you're not expecting to finish fifth, get in there at the last minute or or whatever. I remember a few seasons ago in the Eastman League when Brentwood Town got into the fifth place and they went on to actually win, win it when... Harlow had scored over 100 goals and over 100 points in that season, lost promotion by a point and, and got knocked out in a semi-final. Do you know what I mean? So how how difficult is that for, you know, for you guys? And do you, do you rather finish? I know you want to finish second because you want the home tie in the semi and the home tie in, in the finals. But that fifth place team is, is a, must be a bit of a nightmare and a real banana skin. And would you it agree? Is. If you... Yeah, I mean, we we actually lost the playoff final here um, to Froome Town, going back a few years, well, about four, five, six years, I thought something like that. Um, yeah, and we we were we scored twenty odd goals more than them, you know, at the end of the day. And it, it's you're dead right. It's but it was a little bit of a different case then because I was the only manager of playing, sort of like watching a, a playoff final really dreading it if we won because we didn't have the finance behind us in other words we were so much more advanced on the field than what we were off and I always remember they had one shot one goal and we had a um, Nick Watts used to play for me and um, had a one-on-one with a one-on-one with a goalkeeper and it hit this divot and it hit the post and went for a goal kick rather than a goal. And I was the only one in the ground, I think, which was sort of like, thank Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I, hope, I hope that divot's repaired for Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> There's many more now. That's right. <laughs> but but it, it, it's strange because it is. It's it's You you really want to go into those... Every every club should have that ambition to go forward and, and obviously move up the pyramid system. But it does come down to logistics. It does come down to finance. It 
comes down to a hell of a lot more, you know, because obviously you've got to sustain it at what level. I think this club personally, we're getting to the, you know, if we, if we do manage to get um, promotion this year, will be a level where we can actually say, this is what, this is exactly where we want to be and stay because mm. that's the level which we can, you know, go to. I mm. think be any any sort of um, feelings about going anywhere on that, well, probably be a little bit much cuckoo land. Obviously. I mean, I've asked a lot of people this question over the last few weeks because we're getting closer and closer to, to that, this sort of this sort of happening. As a as a manager, as a chairman, uh, uh, you know, and that, do you prefer to go up as champions, yeah, or would you prefer to go up as playoff winners? No, I would prefer to go up as champions. Obviously, um, you know, <clears throat> it, it's just I don't know. I mean, the, the team actually wins it usually deserves it, albeit it could be us, could be Hamworth, it could be Wimborne, could be Tom. You, you know, nine times out of ten, the actual team that actually wins it deserves to actually win it and go up. Um, you know, if you go up, uh, Winchester, as Winchester, I mean, they went up, didn't they, last year? It's, it's it's a tough, tough place to be, you know. They've done extremely well as well, by the way, Winchester, you know, to sort of, you know, hang about just just out of the um, relegation section. So they've, they've done quite well. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, it is, it's always about off the field. It's got to be off the field because... Obviously, unless you're, you're blessed with five or six money men, um, it's difficult. Yeah. No matter you know, no matter who you are, really. Steve. Well, I mean, I, I yes, the champion thing is is the um, the creme, isn't it? But um, realistically, I think I'd be looking at the opportunity of having home field advantage for the playoffs to actually get some income. But um, again, we've got to be realistic, haven't we? You know, we've um, we've, we've still got to play these top sides. Um, I, yeah. If I'm honest, I, you know, I reckon it's written in the stars that we could be end up playing Wimborne um, in the playoffs. And, but, but you know, like Dave said, I mean, uh, Bashley slipped into the, the fifth position last night, um, you know, and you, you just never know. But I mean, we just need to maintain our momentum and see where it takes us. It's, um, you know, certainly our lads are up for it. It's just a question that the, you know, the club and the board have to um, have to deal with it um, as best they can if, if, this sort of, if this actually does become a reality. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I spoke to a couple of managers and they said, well, we go up as champions, which of course everybody wants to do. We always want to go up as champions because, we, you know, we're the winners, et cetera, et cetera. He said, but he said, I don't know. He said, it's just think about winning those playoffs. He said, he said, like the, the whole sort of like cup final, the atmosphere, the sort of the buzz and, and all the rest of it. And I'm, and I'm, but it just took my memory back to when I was with Harlow and, you know, we, and we beat sort of, uh, I think it was Cray, you know, Hornchurch in the final. Um, you know, to to get up, and that day will always live here. Do you know what I mean? It's always yeah. in that head of of what an incredible you know semi final it was, and and fine it was, and and even takes my mind back to I think the first year they got to, we got to the the playoffs three years in a row, and the first time we got through, we were playing Haybridge Swifts, and we played them, and and I still remember it that all the Harlow fans were around the tunnel. They got a big like metal tunnel area that they come out of at the top of part of the pitch, and they're all round that. To the top of the tunnel, all banging on their drums and singing, and the atmosphere was electric. And we'd lost them three times that year, once in the FA Cup and twice in the league. And we went on to actually beat them. Um, you know, for me, I knew he was going to win the minute the manager decided to take manager of the month award in the middle of the pitch at the semi-final <laughs> before the game started. It was just a foregone conclusion what was going to happen. But then we went to the final and played Whitam in the final, who we'd beaten twice that year. And got beat. Do yeah. you know what I mean? And it was one of those those sort of things always sort of stick in your, you know, sort of stick in your mind. But uh, it's it's going to be great fun watching. I'll be honest to see you guys and and how things are going because it's it's maybe a two horse race for the uh, as we sit at the moment for for the championship. But that playoff uh, places is really sort of hotting up in the South Division. Yeah, I think if you if you lose a playoff final, I mean. You know, you just got asked through town, haven't you? I mean, they, they haven't been the sort of same team this this season. You know, I don't know if that's affected them or not, but to lose a playoff final was quite a quite a blow, really, because you know the disappointment is not only for yourself, obviously, it's for your supporters, etc. And uh, you know, it's not a nice way to sort of like go. It's just like reaching the FA Vars final and then coming runners up. Yeah. It must be the same. We thing. wouldn't know. Yeah, that penalty shootout still haunts me. But it is. Well, yeah, you would you know, wouldn't you? The semis, yeah. obviously, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. It's, it's a horrible feeling, you know. Um, but uh, the playoff, losing the playoff is, is yeah, 
it's not good. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I mean, are both teams going into you know, gaining confident. Only definitely gaining confident in the weekend. But I mean, are we both, are both teams at full strength for the weekend? Uh, I wouldn't say if we're not if we were or not. Anyway, <laughs> to be <laughs> honest with you, I mean, it, it's you know, it's it is what it is. There's, there's a lot of a lot of games being played this time of the year, and um, it's it's going to be you know not long before it's Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday next week. It's you know Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday. So. Tough, tough games, you know. Um, it takes its toll. I say it will come down to two things. If you're lucky with injuries and our biggest squad is, you know. Um, you know, and I, we've had quite a few games called off. Um, luckily, they were at home this year. And, um, last year, we had a lot of games called off away. So, we were sort of travelling a lot in the last couple of months. But, you know, teams have actually got to visit us. So, that's going to be sort of a slight advantage as well. But, um, yeah, it, we, we just, I say, just took them off as they come along. Yeah, I mean, people coming to you because you've got Tavistock to come to you, Bashley, uh, Bidford to come to you, Wimborne to come to you, Evesham to come to you, Portland Rovers, and of course, Hamworth at the weekend. Yeah, <clears throat> we, we look forward to it. You know, I mean, it's, it's it's all good games. I mean, so I say to the lads, it's about not really being top of the league and, you know, winning it. It's about applying ourselves properly in every match. You know, you've got to take every game as a. Mm. It's a, like a, your last game, really, in, in some ways, and um, just make sure that everybody's up for it on the day. Um, you know, people of a certain age will say, you know, um, after Lord Mayor's show, I mean, Totten, you know, we played extremely well and we were buzzing and went down to Bristol Manor Farm and we were flat. You know, but if you say to some players now after the Lord Mayor's show, they look at you and say, what are you on about? <laughs> they, don't, they don't understand what it is, you know? Um, so it, it's it's... I don't know. It's it's a feeling of momentum. That's what we want. And you know, when we were flying about five or six weeks ago, um, that's when we had started having games called off. And then it just slowed the momentum down. So it's just like starting the season all over again. And it's the same for every side. But when you're at the top, it's very very difficult because you want that you want that game to the next game to come around quick. You don't mind playing two games a week, you know. Um, but form, you know, at the end of the day, I think you know with form. Sometimes I look at the form guide, sometimes I don't, because I say if you take every game as an individual game coming up, you work on obviously the main thing is working on your own strengths and weaknesses and not too much for the opposition. Mm-hmm. But it is nice to be in a run, obviously. Yeah. Now, Hamworthy have got probably now when they're playing teams second time around, but probably have a little bit, no disrespect to this, but they, they know what they're up against. First time teams in this league. Um, who play with you for the first time and not really sure possibly what Hamworth they're all about. And they don't realise that, you know, you've got a fortress and you've got a, a really good team in, in you, you know, mm. nine times out of ten, you know, you're, you're very hard to beat. Um, so the second time, it'd be interesting when you're playing teams the second time round, if there's any different reaction at all, you know? Well, I think there might be a, a sort of a, a bit of a glitch Maybe on on the football web pages because I noticed this with another team during the uh, early earlier in the week. But it says here Hamworthy United away to Slimbridge on the twenty second of March, and your kickoffs at seven forty four. <laughs> so make sure you kick off then because yeah, uh, get there early. <laughs> it's exactly what it says. So make sure the the manager brings everything forward by a minute, <laughs> yeah, because it's a seven forty four kickoff against Slimbridge. Um, on the twenty second of, of March, but last question. I mean, what is the tr- what's the distance between the two teams? Are, are we close, or, or or is it one of the furthest travels that you've got to to travel from Hamworthy to Shodin? I mean, what is the what is the distance? Well, I suppose yeah. it's day thirty five miles, forty miles tops. Yeah, yeah. It's only it's only an hour, isn't it? Really? Yeah, yeah. It's not very far. It's not too bad. No, that's right. No, one of the closer games. That's for sure. <laughs> well listen guys massive thank you for giving up your time to talk to us today I really appreciate it I hope it's a cracking game at the weekend and and I look forward to the uh, to the VO uh, coverage as long as it don't break down yeah if it breaks down I know that yeah. I know you have won well one but it's a great goal <laughs> but, uh, but listen I really look forward, I look forward to uh, to seeing the footage of the game and everything else and, uh, I wish you all the, both of you guys we you know all three of you guys the best of luck at the weekend for, for both of you thanks so much Dan yeah, thanks very much. Cheers. No Cheers, mate. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Well, a massive thank you, of course, to Steve, to Dave, and to Phil from the from Hamworth United, and of course from Charlotte. We wish both sides all the very, very best for the weekend, as we do for all the rest of the clubs, of course, taking part in games 
this weekend. Let's hope the weather stays away and everybody gets to play football this weekend. Also, of course, don't forget the goal show every single Wednesday here on the Southern League YouTube channel. And please, can I ask every fan to subscribe to the channel? Let's watch it. Let's subscribe and let's share it out there to the wider non-league family and get as many people watching our programs as possible. We're almost at 500 subscribers now. So let's get that uh, moving up towards 500, 550, 600, and let's move it forward. But a massive thank you for watching these shows. And until next week, good night.